Hey guys, what's going on? We're back here with another Rust base build. My name is Tech, and I will be showing you how to build this base today. First, I just want to make a quick mention. It, we're about to hit 1,000 subscribers. It's absolutely crazy. I appreciate all your support, all the subscriptions and everything like that. It's just nuts. Uh, I'm really excited about this base, though. I really think you're going to enjoy it. You see we got a heli tower on there. We got a defensive post uh, next to the heli tower. We got the large furnace on the inside. But the good stuff, obviously, is going to be inside the base. So let's get right into the tour. And you come through here, just regular airlock. And now the goal of this base is basically to keep it fairly open so that your group can move around freely, but still have good amount of storage and also keep your loot really spread out rather than just being a brute force defense base. And the first part about that is we have this large furnace room and in here we got a water catcher and a uh, oil refinery. And over there you see we got our research table and our repair bench. And then up above you'll see we have two rooms in here too. So we're really making the most out of uh, all the room that the large furnace gives us. Got two boxes in here and a bed. And then it's going to be the same thing on the other side. Another bed and two boxes in there. And really the main reason for the boxes is if you spawn, like you could put a locker up there too. So if you spawn in there, you can get geared up and get back out real quick. But it also gives you an ability to spread your loot out. Because um, really, rather than making it like 10 walls to your loot or whatever, we sort of tried to spread loot all throughout the base. Get a decent amount in all different places. So for them to fully raid you, it costs a crazy amount rather than you know if they just get to one spot they're hundred percent successful so we'll come through here and in here is gonna be your tool cupboard that's why we got the armor door on there you see we got these drop boxes spread all over too you got plenty of room for more of them they're really great I, I love using them actually here we got your refrigerator and a large box there's obviously plenty of floor space here too if you wanted to put small furnaces like while you're building the base here's another big row of drop boxes and you could put more drop boxes there and here we got three boxes and another drop box so plenty of storage in here it's all fairly spread out and it's also like pretty mobile like you can move around fairly easy so now upstairs you see we got more drop boxes in here you could probably put like a planner uh, one of the longer planners and here's one of our first bedrooms this has a locker big box and one bed then in here we got two beds, a locker, and another box. So, so far already we have like five beds throughout the base. And obviously, like I said, man, you, you can fit a lot more things in here. You go ahead and fit furnaces on the floors and stuff like that. Here's one of our loot rooms again with three boxes. Through here is our biggest loot room with five uh, boxes. This overall is probably the safest spot, I would think. But uh, the bottom floor realistically might be even safer. Just because of a base this size, people are going to try to blow from the top. So now here, this is just a little walkway where you can put more doors, by the way. I only have two doors between this building and the middle. You can put another two doors there to have four more. And here is more loot storage. And now on this point, we're into the, uh, basically it's like the flank tower, really. This is the one that has the best angles for shooting people. So we have some loot spread through here, and then this is your access to your roof. And so you could see, you could even fight from up here if you wanted to put low walls on the outside here or cement barricades or anything like that. We'll just hop up here real quick, I'll give you an overview. This is going to basically be the front of the base. Here you got uh, Spider-Man drops, so if you got to get down to the ground real quick, you just run into those and fall straight down. And we'll come back over here, and then that's the uh, what I'm calling the flank tower, I guess. Here you can see we've got double stack grills too for the large furnace. That way it's a little bit better protected than just having one wall above it. So now we'll come back in here, and we'll go upstairs to the actual like flank tower part. And here you can see, because I don't have the metal uh, embrasures on it, you got a lot better angles for actually fighting people. That's why I'd consider this more of a flank tower. Uh, and then on the other side is going to be the heli tower, which is actually a little bit of a modified version of the heli tower that I built recently, and I have a video up on, so. But yeah, this, there's plenty of room in here too. You could obviously change all this up. I left it a little bit bare bones because it is fairly like uh, susceptible, I guess. It's probably where people are going to blow first. 
And then here again, you can add more doors, like I was saying on the other side. Same kind of thing. We got drop boxes, a little campfire in here. Some more loot storage in here. And just like the other side, we get a ladder hatch up. And now out here, I really used a lot of armor doors just because like I was saying, this is probably going to be the parts that people are going to blow into more than the core of the base because there's so many layers really to get to the core. Then here you go, this is your roof access from this side. And all these two are all airlocked, so if somebody does climb to the top of your base, you don't get a, they don't go deep through your roof. And now here's the heli tower part with the metal embrasures up. And like I said, this is a pretty much the same design that uh, I have up in a separate video, except I did change a little bit of something on the roof to give you a little bit better mobility so that you can, if you have to fight from this tower, you can fight rather well if like someone tries to raid you or anything like that so here's the change that I made I put these double doors with the cement barricades here gives you pretty good angles for the heli and good protection but it also lets you be able to move up on these roofs and close these doors and now you got better uh, fighting ability down to the ground in case you're getting raided or whatever you can even use that door as like a shield so you don't get hit from the side and it just gives you a whole lot of really good angles to fight from whether it's the heli or if you're trying to counter a raid or anything like that and that's the main uh that's the main change that i made from the actual heli base build that i have on the channel but outside of that i mean that's the whole base it's pretty roomy i feel like for the cost of under 150,000 stone i feel like you get a lot of space and for someone to be able to get to all of your stuff if you spread it out nicely it, it would just be a whole lot for them to get through um they may get to one of your loot rooms most of the loot rooms have a bare minimum of three walls before you get to them um however for them to get to all of your loot rooms it would just be you know i, I can't even figure out exactly how much explosives it would cost i think it's also a pretty good looking base and it's definitely a really functional base as far as having space and being able to get everything you need done so now this is a pretty long base to build so a bunch of it's going to be sped up hopefully it's not too fast for you i stop a lot for the more difficult parts or things that need explanation but you basically just start with a regular circle made out of triangles put on uh three doors on the back here and just go ahead and put another door here and now we can work on actually laying out the footprint of the base And this is going to be just the footprint of just the main core of your base. And then from here, you're going to add on the furnace. Then you're going to add on the heli tower and then going to add on the flank tower. So it's somewhat modular. You can actually make it more livable through the sections. Here's the double door and single door. This is going to lead to your furnace. And what I was saying is you could sort of make it modular and make it fairly easy to live in while you're building. You wouldn't build it exactly the same way I'm building it here. But you can sort of figure out the steps that you would need to take. Like there's sometimes where I leave like roofs open and stuff like that. Where if you were to just close it off you could live in it just fine. So now you got your front door in. And we're just finishing up the outside wall and starting some of the honeycomb down here. Over in this corner is where you're going to put your uh, tool cupboard. Obviously you're going to want to get that up as soon as possible. Put that doorway in and you can go ahead and start sealing up the roof. And then come on this side and same kind of thing. You just want to start filling out the, the roof again and build up these two doors and then two walls here for this loot room and throw a ceiling on there. So now everything's pretty much sealed up here. Now like for this part right here around this ladder you could just build an airlock and realistically this part of the base would be secure so you could basically live in this while you're farming or fighting or whatever you want to do but just for the sake of making this build faster I didn't go through the steps of you know showing all the the modular stages of the base so now up here we're setting up uh, those loot rooms just in case you guys don't know how to do this trick I'm just gonna show you in real time 
you just want to make that center box as dead center as you can so that you can fit these two boxes tucked like neatly on the sides here and as long as they're over that uh, line in the floor that shows the triangle they'll be able to stick through the half wall that you're gonna put down and you want to upgrade those half walls because if they're twig they'll just disappear and then your boxes will break and you'll lose all your loot and you know all kinds of fun stuff so up here you can do the box laying on its side like that or you can turn it and angle it towards you however you really want to do it it'll fit either way just make sure you have access to all five of them and then you get right back to putting up doorways and setting up the walls in here and of course you want to make sure that you get your honeycomb you don't have to put uh, ceilings on top of the honeycomb if you want to I don't do it just because it's cheaper but if you really had the resources you can seal all that stuff off and now you can start putting some beds into if you want to do bags instead for the time being you obviously can do that you can fit bags in a lot more places than just here and then just back to going ahead and closing off that ceiling so here's the same kind of a thing <clears throat> This is just a smaller loot room. It's the same thing. You want to tuck the one box up against the wall. Go ahead and sneak this box in right there. And then you can put another half wall and it'll let you throw one more box on there. And if you want to, you could throw uh, one of those like metal drop boxes in the, the wall there too. Give you a little bit more storage in there. And then this is the single bedroom where you can fit only one bed. Obviously you can fit like 35 bags or something in here. So once that's done, start closing off the ceiling some more, then you can climb up top. Just make sure everything's all sealed off, obviously, especially your loot room. And like I said, you could fill in those empty triangles there, but basically this is the stage you would be on. Like I was saying before, you could build an airlock right around that ladder, and of course put the triangle ceilings up there, and the base would be, you know, not super secure, but secure enough to operate out of. I mean, I wouldn't log out because you'd only really have one wall to most of your loot in some places but if you needed to while you went and got more resources or whatever you could do it so now we're gonna focus on this area just this center section just to get a roof on it and basically this is gonna be like I was talking about how you put an airlock around that ladder put your two doors on there and then you can go ahead and throw the ceiling and now you're fairly secure to move around and at this point if you had a starter base that you're using your small furnaces to get resources to do this stuff you're probably ready to get that large furnace up because the small furnaces are absolutely horrible so if you wanted to like I said you could cap those things off with triangles but for now let's get downstairs and I'll show you how to get your large furnace in there that way you can really start cooking up stuff so you're just gonna want to make this part of the footprint in twig And now back here, you're actually going to want to use sheet metal for the foundation. You realistically should use sheet metal for all the foundations and floors. But just for the sake of making it easier to build, I build it with uh, stone floors during the build. But you're going to want to stick to that sheet metal for all your foundations and floors. That's how the, uh, the base that we do the tour of, that's how that is. That's also how I got the calculation for 146,000 or 148,000 stone. So now you just keep laying out the footprint like this. This is going to protect your large furnace area. And once those walls are up, you can go ahead and just get rid of all this twig. Now you want to take your large or your small refinery and tuck it as close as you can in the corner. This thing I know is really picky about where it gets placed, but you just want to get as close as you can into one of those corners. Worst case, you can put this water catcher on the other side if it doesn't fit here. You can see it start giving me some trouble, but luckily found a spot and it just dropped in right there. And now you can just drop your large furnace in right here. And you're gonna want to try to get that as close as possible to that oil refinery. That way you can put the uh, floor grills up above it. And then let's just <laughs> let's just get on top of this large furnace here. And you want to start in closing the ceiling. Obviously, you're gonna to want to put your your floor grill openings there. 
then go ahead and drop those grills on there now you're pretty secure in here if you want to go ahead and build these rooms now you can or you can wait till later doesn't really matter get your ladder up there for easy access and go ahead and do the same thing on the other side and the really good thing too is once you get the second layer of floor grills up top if people look through they'll never even know that you have rooms there so unless they want to blow directly to your large furnace they'll leave those rooms alone so now we got our loot room set up here we got our large furnace all set up and we got our airlocks up here basically so you're relatively secure I mean you could probably leave your base like this if you're gonna sign off the first day or something and you might be okay now the next part is a little bit harder here you want to do all these triangles around your core if you don't do these first you won't be able to do them later so you really want to make sure you get them done and on there now once they're on there you can go down below here and you're gonna drop your roofs in like this just wait until you get that blue highlight right above the wall and go ahead and just throw those in there now you're gonna want to leave a gap for each one of your doors like I did here but if you mess up like I did on this side yours will be twig instead of stone instantly so it'll be a lot easier for you to just break through so just go ahead and make sure those doors are open and I'm gonna have to run back down and throw that roof on there so let's do that now all right now once uh, you're like that you can go ahead and throw just a square floor here you do it on both sides you can realistically do two out because that's what's gonna be there anyway but now you can run around and upgrade your uh, roof tiles without it being too much of a pain because sometimes they can uh, be a little rough to update or to upgrade so once they're all upgraded to stone and everything then we can work on actually boxing those roofs in and then like I said you could put two squares here if you have to put a third it's not a big deal just don't upgrade it leave it as twig and then go ahead and box that whole core in toss another floor and then if you can want to you can go through all the roof area and put up honeycomb walls as far as you can sometimes the walls sort of create their own side walls so you may not need to So now all you have to do is finish this outside honeycomb to give yourselves three walls of protection on this side and then this part's mostly done until we get to the other side again. So now once that's done, you can just hop up here, fill in the, the three blanks that you're going to have basically. And now the main part of your core is pretty much finished. Obviously it's still not too well protected. Uh, right now I think there's some sections that are only like two walls to the center or whatever, or two walls to loot. So now what you're going to do is just start expanding outward. Um, but the first place that you're going to want to start, if you put a third square over here, obviously you're going to want to get rid of it. And then the quickest way to make sure you add another wall to your loot is just put a second layer of the floor grills above your furnace here. And now you're pretty much, I think, three walls in every direction. <clears throat> Once that's done, we can come down here and we're going to put the uh, footprint of each one of the towers down. It's really simple. It's like a two by two. And then just one layer of honeycomb on the outside of each 2x2 two two. and if you want a little bit of extra protection you could put a square here and you could actually build up all the way around this honeycomb but that's obviously up to you guys in case you want to expand it for more use now these pillars aren't really necessary either I put them up there just because I know I'm gonna put a heli tower so I'm gonna need that stability up higher and they help out in that regard I haven't actually tried building it without those pillars, so if you do build it without that, I'm not positive if those roofs will overhang or not. So if you have the resources, you might as well put them up. So 
so then we're just sealing all this in and then we're gonna run uh we're gonna run through and finish up all the honeycomb here and then we're gonna i'll catch you back up uh up top so we can start working on the actual towers So I actually mess up here and you'll watch as I have to go back down there. I forgot to do all the honeycombing down there. But now you get to see how I get out of there twice. So yeah, you definitely want to put this honeycomb in here. Otherwise people can basically knock down your whole tower with like eight rockets. So definitely put this honeycomb in. And then it's really easy to just build your way out of here using stairs and floors. So now once you got that floor on, you can work on the actual tower design and start boxing this in a little bit. And like I said, it's pretty simple. It's just a two by two. So there's different ways to design this inside. If you guys don't have a ladder hatch or you know anything like that, you can always just change the layout. I kept it pretty simple in the two by two. So here you'll see we have that path right over to the other side and go ahead and just throw the floors on and build the same thing over here you don't have to build the same thing obviously if you wanted to keep it a little bit different keep uh, raiders guessing you can build it completely different from the other side so with those two ladder hatches and the basic two by twos done you're ready to finish the honeycomb around the furnace just to give all your loot downstairs a lot more protection then once we're finished with this, we'll go ahead and get to work on the heli tower. And then after that, we'll do the flank tower. And yeah, that was my Discord, not yours. Don't bother checking it. <laughs> All right, so now we're ready for the heli tower portion. And it's a pretty straightforward build. We're gonna add on that one more loot room over here and another airlock on the uh, ladder hatch. And if you guys have actually seen my heli build video, it does really well at keeping the napalm and all that stuff separated um, so that you can fight it easily. You can actually fight it from that flank tower too. You got a lot greater chance of getting killed in there, but if you have enough people, Keeping it looking at two different towers is really, really effective at getting it down fast.
Now just like in the last build, you want to make sure that we do the top first. We're going to have to put a layer of squares around the outside before we put the uh, roof panels on downstairs. So the quicker you get this part done, then you'll be able to do these squares outside. Uh, before that actually, we're going to go ahead and put these double doors down. Just so that we have a good reference. And then you want to come out here with the squares. And you want to line it up with the actual building, not with those double doors. And you should have enough stability. Um, I'm not sure. Obviously you can't hang it off by itself, but I'm not sure if the posts are actually needed, but I seem to have plenty of stability to build it up like this. And then just for the sake of uh, speeding this up a little bit, I'm actually going to fly and put these roofs on. You can obviously just build some twig out and do it um, if you don't have flight in your game. And then here's, if you haven't seen one of my other heli videos, here's how you do that double door setup that I have. After the frame, you put that some that concrete barricade in, and then you put the double door. And the good thing with that too is that those concrete barricades take a lot of damage from the heli before they actually blow up. And they're really cheap to replace. But then you go ahead and do that on all those double doors. But now we're ready for the other tower. This tower is a lot easier to build, obviously. It's only uh, one floor above here, so it should be quick. And so now once your flank tower is all set up like that, obviously now at this point I would start adding doors, but the whole time you're building this, of course you're going to want to be adding the doors as you go and everything, make sure everything's secure. But that's pretty much the entire build. If you made it to the end of the video, man, I really appreciate it. Uh, I hope that you enjoy the build. Uh, I hope to hear from you below in the comments if you see any room for improvement or if you enjoy the base or if you're going to be using it or anything like that at all. Uh, I hope that if you aren't already subscribed to the channel, hope you'll stick around and hit that sub button and check out all the content that we're bringing out. You know, we always have base builds coming out. I'm also doing a lot more of the solo series. Um, I have a group series that's coming up and stuff like that. So if you enjoy Rust and you enjoy my content, why don't you hit that sub button and make sure that you get notified of it whenever it comes out. But other than that, guys, I hope that you enjoyed the video. I hope you have a good night. And I will catch you in the next video.